right, welcome back for another session with Visual Arts with Mr. G. Again, Mr. G, duh. Uh, so, what we're doing today, working on drawing. So, why do we draw? We draw so that we have a game plan as to what we're going to create. So, up here on the board, I got drawing already written out for us. Let's give us a, let's add some stuff to that. So, our basic shapes are the following square, triangle, and a circle. These three shapes are what we use to make up everything that we draw. Why do we use these three shapes? Well, these three shapes are augmented just slightly. The circle can sometimes become an oval. The triangle can sometimes come down more. And if you did a circle at the bottom, that becomes a cone. And the cube is a pulled off of a square. Sometimes you can stretch it out and make it a bigger rectangle too. All these things added together, all of these shapes, and add them together to create our imagery. So, by using the basic shapes, you are able to draw anything. 1527, take one, wild mm -hmm. roars. No, no, uh, keep it rolling, I just, I just want to try several things. Uh, uh. There's a there's a sound down in the throat somewhere. I just don't know how to reach it. Simba. Cut. All right. So this is a couple pieces of some of my own work, just so that you guys can see it. One thing, it's big. I like to draw things that are that are huge. Why? Because they're so much more interesting than these little fine minute little thingies. So, as cool as this little mask is, it's made of leather, these pictures here are just so much more vibrant. One, you got some color in there, you have line quality, you have shading, you have all these things that we like to see in drawing, all illustrated in these two pictures. I want you to elevate your level of skill so that you can draw something similar as well. So, one of the big things that I want to see on your paper is the following. One big thing that I've got to get in your brains as quickly as I possibly can is value. Different levels of shading, going from that light to dark. I want to see those differences, those changes. That gets it, gives your picture character and makes it more interesting. If the eyes, the shading right above the eye right here was not, didn't have those different levels, it wouldn't have all that great detail. The shadow of the bridge of the nose, side of the nose to the bridge of the nose, there's a big difference. Or you have a lighter cut, lighter shading right here to the darker shading on the side, that shows where the light's been shifted over. So think about anything that has shape, such as this vase, it's a low wooden vase, if the light is shining down from one side, you're going to have one side in shadow. So make sure that you draw all of those little characteristics so that you create an excellent drawing. All right, so let's talk about materials. So we're working in drawing. What are you going to need to use? You got sketch pads, we have sketch notebooks, and you got your spiral bound notebook. These are all various options that you can use. Here's the thing with the sketch pad. Some of these things cost a pretty penny. So if you're going to if you're going to be using this a lot, you might think about investing in it. My money go with the sketch pad. The only problem with the sketch pad versus the notebook is I don't know about you, writing on line paper versus no line paper might be a little bit difficult. So if this is a difficult thing for you to do, see if you can find a sketchbook that actually has the combination of the two. There's some sketchbooks out now that have the white paper along with some line papers, so you got some extra options. After you make sure that you've got your notebook taken care of, don't forget about the most important thing, which is a pen and a pencil. And I say both because you will be end up using both in class. Make sure that you take care of your materials so that you always know where they are. For your pencils, these are what you use for your first beginning sketches. So as you start to throw down a quick sketch, try to use a pencil to throw it down with that. So that way, you make if you make a mistake, you can always erase it. Then follow it up with a pen. Once you've got the basic line down as so you know what you're going to draw, Throw a pen on top of it to make to permanently mark that line on the paper. That way you don't have to go back over a thousand times with pencil. 
Big thing that I hate about pencils is while you're using this, you'll end up with that gray shadowy thing all over your hand. And that's a real problem when you're drawing because then you'll get a lot of smear pieces over there. So make sure that after you use the pencil, put the pen on top. All right, so when you're working on drawing, you have to always figure out, hey, what am I going to draw? Magazines. Your best friend is trying to find something out of a magazine to draw. Why? Because you can do so much cool stuff. I like taking a magazine to find a picture of celebrity, so that it has a good portrait picture or just a good overall stance to it. Why? Because then some, I need to practice working on people. I got a person right there. Two things that are awesome about this. One, that person's never going to move. It's going to hold still for me. That way I can take my time to draw it. And two, it's portable. I can pick this up and I can take it in with me in my sketchbook, draw anywhere that I feel like. If I need to draw outside, I draw outside. Another great thing about the magazine is that you can always find a comic piece in there as well. Usually. If you hunt around, you can find a really cool comic illustration. What's nice about these comics are this is somebody else's artwork. What can you do to take this image and change it up? Add your own little two cents into it to create something just as cool, if not better. So, taking it to the next level, I'm going to look at a couple of little aspects on here. We have these triangular shapes with these abstract single lines next to it. We have uh, lots of elements of shading. The one thing I want to really stress in in your drawing and in your method and the way that you work is play it with shading. Play with it. You can talk about drawing from life, drawing things that are in front of us. So, got a piece here that was done many years ago. Um, it is a skull, just a, a goat skull or ram skull, where you got these nice um, bits of the horn that are textured out here, where you have all the little different sections, and it's very easy to see, very easy to see the different tonal ranges that have been that have been applied to give their strong bits of contrast to the overall image. So let's talk about some stuff that we got on the table here. We got some paper that I'm going to sketch with in just a second, and just a couple pieces in front of me to look at to work on some drawing some drawing aspects and, and how we can apply uh, some of the basic structure pieces that we did in another segment to this piece here. So, I've got a pair of glasses, uh, this little wooden vase thingy, coffee mug. Uh, this was a gift to me from uh, somebody for a uh, tribal, uh, tribal piece, just made out of cardboard newspaper, but the detail work that's been done on the top of it really takes us to another level. And this is a leather face. You can see how it's just a piece of leather, but it's been uh, same same styling where it's a tribal piece done, uh, but the way that the leather has been formed around a shape and given all this contrasting features is really nice. So, starting off with my utensil, we're going to work on some of these drawing aspects. So let's talk about just some basic structure pieces. All right, so here we have a cylinder that is smaller at the bottom than it is at the top. You have just a nice round circle at the top, round circle at the bottom, but then the cylindrical shape of the overall cup, the mug, and just a little handle on the back side. For our mask, our uh, first travel mask, it is one long oval. That's all it is. Uh, and then you have a couple oval pieces for the eyes and the mouth and a couple circles for the nose. It's these basic shapes that you incorporate from everyday life to uh, to draw anything that we, that we work on in, in class or um, in our other tutorial videos. So, for a still life drawing, you're going to be using some basic concepts that are very simplistic in drawing. The first one is called, first aspect is called contour drawing. Contour drawing is looking at the overall shape and the way that the shape is structured and how you're going to draw lines that are single lines moving across the shape of the object but you're trying not to move your pen or your pencil up from there and you're just giving the shape to the overall structure. Is it exactly what is in front of you? Kind of. You're looking at getting just the line of what curves, the contouring line of the object onto the paper. The next is sight drawing. 
Now for sight drawing, you're working with a very basic concept of drawing is that you're sketching. You're taking and making sketching lines, sketching motions with your lines to draw the overall shape. So for this one, let's work on the mask for a quick second. I'm going to have the eyebrow come up and around and bring the nose down to the larger nose nostril sections. Now when I'm drawing this one, I'm looking at my paper and looking at the object almost simultaneously. My eye is literally going back and forth like this, uh, much like a tennis match, uh, while I'm working on these designs because I'm trying to get transfer data quickly from the image to my paper. And also I'm looking at trying to make sure that everything is in the right proportion and in the right shape structure that I have in my on my paper to the image that I'm drawing from. So while you guys are working and working in this in this drawing unit, I want you to be focusing on how do you create these shapes? How do you draw these structures? And what can you do to help elevate your skill level? So one of the things that you got to do is practice. Make sure that you are practicing. Uh, practice is by far the number one best way to get better at your drawing but also as you're working on these uh, pieces I want you to be thinking about what would you like to draw because the number one thing that I have found throughout time is the drawing of things that one it, something that you like if you don't like drawing it it's not gonna be a good drawing I don't care how good of an artist you are if you don't like doing it it won't ever come out right so make sure that you're drawing something that is something that you're interested in all right, so got a little my chin on here. There's my sight drawing piece, and again, just trying to work fast so I can get these structure bits in here. Um, so a lot of people ask me, like, Mr. G, what do you uh, what do you recommend that I draw from? I recommend magazines. It's a still picture. It doesn't move. You can turn it any way that you want so that it's comfortable to the way that you want to draw. Um, you could also get objects. Objects are fine. The only issue with objects is, is if you move the object to another location. Well, this mask was sitting right here a minute ago. I moved it over here. When I moved it this way, I can see more of this side of the face and the way that it's structured around than when it was over here. If you're doing a drawing, a, one drawing over several days, um, it's not a good idea to have something that can move just because you're going the lights going to change your shadows are going to change it'd be a negative aspect if today i'm working on it here and let me use my light and i got my light and i bring my light like this over from my phone and you can see that the light that's entering on this side of the face i have all these contrasting shadows in the back and i have a large uh, bright spot on this side but if I brought the light over here, all of my contrasting uh, shadows are going to be in the opposite side. So if I worked on one piece early in the morning and then I stopped and continued to work on it later that evening, if the light source isn't consistent or it's been moved, altered, changed, anything like that, I'm going to have a different piece. So these are little aspects, little things I want you guys to be thinking about in your drawings so that you can create and design something cool. Also something that is meaningful to you, my uh, the student. Good luck. Can't wait to see some cool stuff in your drawings. Later.